Hello, everyone! Welcome back to this game! When we last left off, we completed Bubble Gloop Swamp, but there was one task that I said that I wanted to attempt, and I'm going to attempt it. Because I'm not sure if I ever have attempted it. And that is Vile's second challenge. It's not required for being in the game, and in fact all you get for doing it is a few extra lives. But the threat that he will take away a life if you fail always scares me off. But since I'm on camera, I feel brave enough to give it a shot. Hooray for a year of subscribing! More than a year, in fact. A baker's dozens worth of a year. Thanks for that, Maddie, and hello straight back. Anyway, as a reminder, we had this challenge here where I was supposed to eat a bunch of worm things, and despite waiting until this point in the game to do the challenge with shoes, I really struggled to do this without... Or I struggled to do this with the shoes. Didn't seem to do any better than without. And I have a couple theories why. One, I've never attempted this with shoes before, so maybe the extra speed threw me off. Two... Maybe the big head mode was throwing me off because it doesn't change your hitbox. So I'm going to give this another go. Going to risk a life for it. And see how this goes. Mr. Vile now has tougher challenge for Green. if Greeny not scared. You must win the next three games to win three extra lives. But each time Greeny loses, Mr. Vile chomps you for one life. Press A to accept or B to slide off like a slug. Wow, that would be interesting. I'm perfectly happy being a croc. Her, <laughs> Greeny brave, but Mr. Vile soon chew Greeny's shorts. Well, we don't even get a warm up to start. All right. Okay, I can tell you already. This is a whole lot easier with these shoes. Now that I don't have a big head, making me think that I can grab them with a big head. Definitely a different size hitbox we're dealing with. Oh, however, I can't help but notice that Mr. Vile is still doing a bang-up job keeping up with my pace. I'm, I've got a decent lead, but he is most certainly faster during this challenge than he was in the previous challenges, and now I'm messing up. Oh gosh, don't fail now! Failure is not an option. I don't care what the Mythbusters say. Oh, that was close. Grr. Greeny won game, but Mr. Vile keep prizes until Greeny wins all games. Okay. I need to grab these again, wish they weren't so far away at the start there. This is the challenge where I need to not eat the yellow ones, because they not ripe. But apparently they're still good as we have discovered, just only whenever we're told to. Okay, which way are you heading? You're heading to that one? Unfortunately, you seem to have a bit of a lead, which I do not care for, no siree. No, this one's mine. Okay, which way are you heading? Heading for that one? Well, unfortunately, you're gonna get that before I do. Which means you're doing a good job keeping up with me again. You're going for this one? Too bad, I got it. Definitely easier now that I ha don't have a big head anymore. Urgh. Greeny won that one as well, but Mr. Vile still keep hold of prize until next game one. Alright, I am well aware that the game starts without a warm-up to start up, so I was prepared to run for the shoes that time. No! Crap, crap. I missed. Don't slide around on my sneakers. That's kind of bad for me. Which way are you heading? To that one. Which way are you heading? 
somewhere. You're down here somewhere. I'll just grab these. I'm still retaining the lead. Oh no! I ate the wrong one! That's not good. I still got the lead though. No! No! Okay, where are you heading? Oh! I did it! Grr. Greeny must have cheated. Mr. Vile not giving you prize. Oh my goodness, Banjo actually has a face for that conversation as it transformed? I never knew that before! Oh, I have to chase you? Well, come here, you. Yow! Greeny wins. Here is prize. I've never succeeded at this before! Greeny fancy chances again, huh? Same deal? Win three games to win three extra lives? Press A to accept or B to slither off like a snake. Mr. Vile is bad as croc of all. Look everyone! Greeny is scurrying off. Yeah, to be fair, I have slithered around as a snake. It was pretty fun. Definitely took some getting used to. But boy, that was a fun game. I'm thinking about replaying it sometime on my own time. Anyway, before we scuttle off, or slither off as may be the case, I noticed at the end of the last stream that I failed to grab one last mumbo token that was sitting right here, so I'm gonna grab that now. And now we are done with Bubble Gloop Swamp. So I kind of want to attack a thing before we do that. I think there's an enemy along this way, yeah. As far as I can think of, this is the only transformation in the game that can actually defend itself and attack enemies. It's kind of weird that. I mentioned before how the transformations in Mario Odyssey are better than this game, and that's one of the reasons why. Most of the transformations in this game primarily serve one purpose, whether it's just climbing walls or surviving inside death water. It's not really a fair combination to make, though. Mario Odyssey is a much newer game than this. Heck, even this game's sequel, Banjo-Tooie, had better transformations than this game. That said, this game definitely had better transformations than my own game, Jester's Hunt. I mentioned that game before. It had transformations because of course it did. I am a big fan of transformations. But the transformations in the game that I made were basically just... Oh, gatekeepers? gate unlockers. Basically, you transform so you could talk to a person to access the area, and that's all they did. Kinda lame. Anyway, if you recall, at one point I came back here and broke a block of ice. I used the washing machine transformation to do that, but if you're not using the washing machine, I recommend coming here immediately after learning how to use the waiting boots. Because you can only travel through here with... The crocodile transformation. Show me now, bird and bear, that little backpack that I'll wear. Or something like that. I would like to see you wearing this backpack. Oh, hey! Here's a guy. Cheeto the spell book you have found. Magic cheats I have for you. Hey, book brain! What did you say? You better not give my spells away. Which lost book? Finders, Bear, and Bird are. Spell they get. We sure do, bag lady! Come on, book boy, give us the spells. Only one spell Cheeto can tell. Enter the code Blue Eggs on Sandcastle Floor in Treasure Trove Cove World. Help you, it will. Thanks, Mr. Cheeto! Hidden in Lair, other spell books are. Them you should find. I will do that.
So there's definitely more than one of these guys. And each one of them essentially going to perform the a similar task by giving well you'll find out once we do this first one at the very least because he didn't exactly say what the code is going to be for oh i'm sure you know what it's going to be either that or you're guessing correct incorrectly uh the spell is blue eggs the code rather it has nothing to do with infinite eggs that's an entirely separate cheat but it does, in fact, have to do with eggs, as you might imagine. Mama Magic get weak. Oh yeah, this. Alright, guess we're changing back to normal. By the way, under normal circumstances, if you were not a gator... Okay, that's unfair. If you were not a crocodile, or a washing machine, the boosts in order to get back to that area are right here. Meanwhile, in this other direction... There's somebody I forgot to talk to. My fat old sister's favorite sport is broomstick racing. Well, that sounds fun. Although she's dim, she attended St. Dunball's school. Why would you want to go to a place called St. Dunball's school? It does not sound like a good place. You won't believe that Gruntilda's party trick is eating a bucket of beans. Actually, I don't believe that, because it seems relatively tame considering who we're talking about. Alright. Oh. That ugly bear, you feathered freak, is nothing but a stupid geek. Yeah, we've you're you're kind of randomly repeating messages we've seen. And it has been pointed out to me in the previous stream, Banjo is a bit of a geek. He plays Game Boy. Nothing wrong with Game Boy though. I've mentioned this before. It's a very it's my favorite system. I should totally stream some games for it. Not really sure which games, though. Outside of Pokemon, I mean. I mean, there's Mario, sure. Mario's always an option, as is Wario. But besides that... What else is there? Ah, so here we are, once again, in the sandcastle. Amazing how often we have to come back to this place. Alright, first things first. You. You're annoying. Especially with your invincibility frames and extra hit. Alright. Blue eggs. You... E... Oh, E again. Two hundred eggs are now yours! Now two hundred is maximum too! That lousy cheat for extra eggs won't help bear and chicken legs. Not sure if that's much of an insult, considering, you know, she's a bird. So the other cheats are similar to that one. They increase your maximum stuff. While I'm here, though... Do I have to leave the room first? Let me re leave the room first. See if this works. Okay, G. 
At this point, it's not going to move. So there's no guarantee that I'm going to get this right. V. E. T. H. E. Let's see. B. B. E A R L I gotta be kind of careful about this and make sure I'm relatively in the middle of these so that I am certain that I am hitting them correctly. That means I succeeded. As Stripe Back has realized, that was in fact the infinite air cheat. I've been wanting to do this the whole adventure. Now I'm doing it. Yeah, it's cheating. But, here's the thing about that. It doesn't matter at this point. The only level that had any chance of giving me trouble with limited air was Clanker's Cavern. We're done with that place now, so it doesn't matter. Now I'm going to have fun with infinite air. Oh sure, there's a couple levels ahead of us that will pretend to give us a scary challenge, challenge with air supply. But I've never actually run out of air on those challenges. So, I don't care. It doesn't matter. So there wasn't a warning given by Gruntilda with that particular cheat, but if I were to input a second one, she would threaten to delete my save file, as I mentioned before. And other people as mentioned before. I think at least a couple of people in the chat have mentioned that. But I'll be honest, none of the other cheats actually interest me that much. Well, I mean, infinite gold feathers definitely interest me. But uh, that's overkill. Sounds super fun. But it's overkill. Alright, we need to start making our way towards the next location. And I think that we go this way. Oh, I forgot something. Hold on a sec. There is a Jiggy I can get now, and I'm going to get it now while I'm still thinking about it, because I'm pretty sure I haven't actually gotten it yet. We got rid of the top of Gruntilda's hat, so now... We can get that one. Uh, and of course, now that we're not big-headed, big-handed, and that sort of thing, we can actually see Banjo holding the Jiggy. Alright, so the next location we're going might be my favorite level in the game. And it once again has to do with the music. The music in the next level is awesome. But it's not just because the music is awesome, and I'll explain as soon as we get into it. Maddie Reddy says, hats off to ya on getting that one, mate. I get it! This next level actually requires a bit of trekking in order to get into. Kinda weird. And there's a path up there I can't get to just yet, so I won't. Instead, we gotta head off in this way. Yeah, this is definitely in the complete opposite direction of where the next level is. A kind of... They put the portrait of this level kind of out of the way. 
although certainly not as out of the way as that wand portrait in the forest. Oh gosh! You were down here. I was expecting you to be up there. Okay, can't swim up there yet. Somewhere in this area, there's... I think... Yeah, there's another Cheeto book somewhere in this area. But I can't reach it yet. Offhand, I can't remember how to reach it, but I'm sure I'll remember at some point. Uh, again, you gotta love that draw distance in these old Nintendo 64 games. I said this before, but they improved it in the Xbox Live Arcade port of the game. And it's definitely a good upgrade. It really does sound... Oh, you said that one. Anyway, yeah, it's a good upgrade. Being able to see far... Seeing objects in the distance is always better than not. I would have no idea why anybody would prefer any other way. Alright, and in here, if I'm good, I can get that. Alright, we've opened the next level. Now I have to trek all the way back in order to reach it. Where's the exit? Where's the exit? Here it is. Thinking on it, I might have been able to save a little bit of time by using a cheat in order to open the next, next level without having to trek to the puzzle. But I figured, yeah, I might as well just do this normal. Oh, uh, Maddie. Uh, Maddie Ratty, in regards to being able to see things from further away, says sometimes because you can see them from farther away and their animation isn't told to be going, the bees around the honey carrying beehives won't move. That is definitely an interesting thing. I think it's kind of like that with some other stuff as well. Where they won't start animating until you get close because they were programmed to not be animating until you get close. Actually, I'll tell you what. That was bad aim. How far can we get from these beehives, I wonder? Actually, it's kind of like that right now. You can barely see it, but the bees are there, and they're not moving. Imagine you on Grunty's back. I want to see a picture now of Kazooie riding on Gruntilda's back. I'm sure it exists. It probably exists. Okay, so this is a familiar area. We came in here in order to unlock Gubby's Valley, but the path actually continues along this way. Be careful, that's a pit behind there. There's also some stuff in that direction, but it's not worth going there yet. So, off we go this way. And into a very haunted area. Which I believe is holding another Brentilda, so let's go ahead and talk to her while I'm thinking about it. Did you know Wartbax keeps a dragon's foot in her pocket for luck? Ow! Kind of wishing it hadn't randomized to that piece of trivia. I've also seen my sister cuddling a huge sweaty baboon in bed at night. I wouldn't want to hold a baboon even if it wasn't sweaty. She's really proud of her broomstick. It's a top-of-the-range 
Lord Master 2000. And giving me health. Alright. Somewhere there's an extra life. I think it's actually down this way. Before I enter the next level, it is super important to bust this down. Super important. You'll understand why when the time comes. This is where the life is. I am acquiring a decent amount of lives. What else? Is it, I feel like there might be something else hidden here. No, it's just red feathers on top of the tombstones. Alright, so... It is time... Oh, hold on a sec. Strikeback says, Have I mentioned that I love how the music changes based on where you are? Yes! It is kind of interesting how it does that. And the transition is smooth. It's not like... Suddenly cuts out and then it's a different version of the song that cuts in. It's really well done and one of the things I like about this game. Anyway, as I was about to say, it is time for us to go into our first break. And when we come back, oh boy, I'm going to enjoy this one. <laughs> 